Thank you, Jennifer. My name is Ronan Carroll, and I am the project manager for the Dodder Greenway on behalf of South Dublin County Council. The Dodder Greenway has been in the pipeline since 2012, which was when the feasibility study was carried out. Uh, it has been funded by both the NTA, the National Transport Authority, and the European Regional Development Fund, the ERDF. The Greenway is to be on a par with the best greenways in the world. It's to be four to five metres wide and is to be a lit cycling and pedestrian facility. It's over 70 kilometres long and it links Sir John Rogerson's Quay in Dublin city centre to the entrance of the Bornebrina Reservoir just past Tipper Park in South Dublin. STCC are responsible for 14 kilometres of the scheme from the Bornebrina Reservoir um, to Orwell Park in Rathfarnham. Due to the complexity of the project, it has been split into three phases. Phase one is currently underway, it's on site, and it is the construction of the three pedestrian and cycle bridges. Phase two is the parkland links between these bridges, and that was just tendered in uh, September of this year. Appointment of a main contractor is due in a couple of weeks in December 2020. And phase three is a little bit more complicated. They are the, uh, it involves the on-road works, and that is due to be tendered early next year. So this is a photograph of the layout of Bridge One, which is to the rear of the Balbrook Centre. And the purpose of Bridge One is to connect the communities in Avonbeg and Millbrook Lawns to the Greenway and on down through Dodder Valley Park. And um, there's some progress photographs which we have uh, shown here. So this is the carcass of the bridge without the deck. And um, there is handrails to go in, which have an integrated public lighting within the handrail. As, as part of bridge one on the Fairhouse Road, all of the bridges will have uh, public lighting within the handrail. Bridge two is the Kavir Estate, uh, which connects Temple Oak Village to the Greenway in Kavir Park. Uh, some progress photographs attached. Uh, these are, this is the bridge being installed in Kilvere Park before it was craned into place a couple of weeks later. So that was put in place uh, in the middle of the summer. This photo is also in Kilvere Park. It's to the back of uh, Tesco in Raffarnham Shopping Centre. There's a service yard or service road at the top of that bank. And we uh, were looking at a green engineering solution and it just shows how far green engineering has come. Um, that's a reinforced earth bank and there's quite a significant load on the top. So it was, it was great to be able to put in a green engineering solution there as opposed to a standard reinforced concrete retaining wall which wouldn't have, have, have complemented the area at all and we feel that this solution really will complement the area when, when it starts to get some growth of plants and grass. Bridge 3 is to the rear of Raffarnham village and connects the area of Ratdown Avenue through Bushy Park uh, over uh, the Dodder River, over the wall to Bushy Park, over the Dodder River and onto the Greenway, direct access onto the Greenway for those in, in turn, your, particularly in the Ratdown Avenue area. Given that Bushy Park Woodland has, a, has many high grade mature native trees. Care was taken early in the design to try and minimize the negative impact on the trees. So the bridge has a curve on it at around 90 degrees and it, that was in order to get around the mature beech tree that's shown in the photograph. So the photograph is just taken during the night lift just to show the installation of the bridge and the care that was taken to avoid any impact on the mature trees that are in the woodland of, of Bushy Park. Um, this is a photograph of the main bridge lift. There was a road closure required on, on Springfield Avenue. So it was, what, it was quite a significant crane that was needed to, to lift that section into place. But everything went to plan and the, the bridge was installed on time and the road was opened on time at about 7 a.m. the next morning. And this is just a photograph of the, of, of the almost finished product. The, bridges in and the abutments are built and constructed. There's anti-graffiti paint. That's uh, a treatment that's been painted onto the, to the concrete um, champagne glass piers is what they're called. And what's left now is the uh, the deck is to go on and the public lighting handrail is, is yet to go in place. Um, as well as engineering challenges, there was ecological uh, challenges and protection measures that were required. Um, and given the environmental sensitivity of the Dodder Valley and the Dodder River itself, um, it, the decision was made early on in the project to appoint an ecologist to the design team who would supervise the works. And this was a, a great benefit. We were able to try and uh, get ahead of any environmental challenges. Um, the ecologist could advise and we could try and uh, design solutions that had uh, the smallest negative impact on the ecology as possible. Um, the bridges are clear span. They were designed uh, to be um, 
prefabricated offside and then constructed close to the site and then craned into place in, in one lift to try and minimize the impact on any of the ecology of the area. And the site clearance of any trees was completed before the bird nesting season. And um, the invasive species, uh, there's some invasive species present in bridge two. So there was a treatment plan in place and uh, the ecologist oversaw that work, which was um, which was great to have. Um, the tree protection plan was required for the tree bridges. So an arborist uh, surveyed and assessed all of the trees in the area and any of the ones that were to be kept and their root protection zones were to be um, protected. There was a, a plan put in place for that and inspected on, on a regular basis. The, there's a lot of bats on the dotter and the lighting, the bats generally don't light artificial lights. So the lighting design and the operation, operational regime was of, as such that it would minimize the impact on the bat. So a lot of care and attention was, was put into that. Um, and we came up with a lighting design and operational regime, which would have, uh, which would have, which would not have a significant impact on the bats. So that's all from me. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions or comments on the daughter, please feel free to post. Thank you.